Um, can you talk about your UVA teammates and what it was like to have Kate and how that motivated you next to you and and Paige qualifying yesterday yeah. or the day before or whatever? Yeah, um, I'm really grateful to have Kate Douglas uh, swimming next to me tonight and then also she swam next to me in the semifinals last night and um, we didn't train that much together throughout the NCAA season but um, leading up into, tri into trials I told Todd DeSorbo um, that our head coach that I wanted to start doing like more 2 IM like purely 2 and IM practices um, with Kate so uh, yeah definitely these uh, leading up like the past six or seven weeks we've been racing next to each other so having her there to pace um, was kind of like a sense of comfort for me especially in the ready room which obviously like the stress in that room can be a little high so I'm really happy to have her there and obviously I couldn't be more happy that we went one two um, and then as for Paige like I trained with her for most of the NCAA season and I've never seen someone who has her kind of work ethic she just kind of showed me what what it would take to be um, an Olympic contender and you know I would just show up every day and I would try to um, try as hard as possible to stay with her on sets but she would mostly would beat me a lot but um, <laughs> Yeah, I, she is someone who I look up to a lot, especially since I'm um, a freshman and she's a senior. So, and I couldn't be also happier that she's on the Olympic team as well. All right, Alex, has it started to sink in just how amazing this year is, has been for Virginia? I mean, the NCAA championships couldn't have gone much better for you guys. And then here you guys are just, you know, one after the other making the team. Um, just, can you just touch on just, emotionally what this whole year has been like for you guys? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, like this year coming in as a freshman, it was a lot different than when I had like committed what I envisioned. Obviously, the social limitations were super high on all the athletes at Virginia. Um, and, you know, obviously that was um, not like what I expected or what I wanted for my first year. But I think the good thing is like our team was became so close especially my first year class like those girls and boys are my ride or dies like they I literally <laughs> could, could not even imagine being here without them um, and you know like this is kind of cheesy but before um, semis last night I was just I was super nervous like freaking out in my room and I just kind of remembered I saw like all the UVA girls posting about um, like the finals lineup and how me and Kay were swimming into I am and I just thought about like Alexis Wenger and Lexi Cuomo and like all these girls who performed they like worked so hard that the season performed so well at NCAAs and I was like well if I'm not going to do it for myself I'm going to do it for them and I'm going to do it for my whole UVA team so I think that kind of just shows like the bond that we've been able to cultivate this year and obviously yeah, I'm really excited for the next NCAA season as well. Uh, Zach and other sports, they talk about, you know, a clutch performance is people being able to perform how they normally would under a lot of pressure, and it seems like you were able to execute your race plan just as you always do, um, even though it was the finals, and you've been in world champ finals before, you've been in the trials final before, but can you take me through that race tonight, and um, how you manage that stress, that pressure, and that emotion? Yeah, so I did, I did absolutely terrible managing the stress. Um, I like... I wasn't really eating as much uh, as I normally would. Like, I just wasn't hungry. The appetite wasn't there. And then um, I was just trying to force myself to eat. That way my body would be prepared when the time came. And I knew I knew what I was here to do and um, that I was here to win. And I wanted I wanted to win and, and sit on the lane line. That was that was my plan. And so my, my coach told me, he's like, look, you've done this a thousand times. You've trained for this. You're ready. You're physically ready. Um, you're not... You're not anxious or nervous. You're excited to race, and it's really easy to get those two mixed up. But physiologically, they do the same thing to your body, so it's a mindset thing. And so once I made the switch to I'm not nervous, I'm excited to race, and especially when I knew what I was there to do. Um, that, and then having been here in this situation before, I mean, obviously being in lane four versus lane seven, uh, it's a little bit different, but. Being able to pull from world's finals and going through semifinals a couple other times was was huge to pull from, and uh, yeah, just tried to do that and then just get the job done. For for Alex, 
What are the next two days going to be like for you as obviously you have that relief off your shoulders, but Gretchen's going in the 100 free and that's going to be a, a real tough event, um, especially more night just to get into the final. So what's that going to be like for you to kind of experience that with her, just like she was there right by the pool with you tonight? Um, thank you for your question. I am so grateful for Gretchen because she obviously is swimming tomorrow and like she shouldn't have been up so late like watching me she should have been like at home resting and she was here and she was like what do you need do you need water like let me let me like let me distract you like let me talk to you and so over the next two days my goal is to be her personal assistant and I'm gonna do everything I can to help ease her nerves I will literally give her a back massage like I don't care I will do anything that she wants just because I know how hard I've worked, and, but I know how hard she's worked too. Even though we haven't been together this year, like we still obviously are super close. So I just want to help her make her dreams a reality, just like she helped me make mine. Are you are you, are you done, or do you have more? Um, I don't know yet. Okay. I think <laughs> I, I scratched a tuner back shirt tomorrow, so I don't know about anything else. <laughs> This is a question for both of you. Can you describe what it's like to sit up here knowing you're going to Tokyo when there was still chatter one month ago, two months ago, that the Olympics might not happen? Um, I, not really, I guess. Uh, it's still kind of surreal, I think. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it says Olympian underneath my name. and. The whole first question you had it for her, I was just like, whoa. Um, I mean, obviously this has been a difficult year, I think, for everybody. And a lot of people had a lot of outside the pool, not no pool access struggles that they had to overcome. And so I think everybody at the meet, just baseline, is just grateful to be here and you know putting up with the mask stuff and, and just doing whatever it takes to make this meet happen. And I commend everybody for that. And it's just a overwhelming sense of gratitude, which I think goes a long way in our sport, especially as unforgiving as it can be. And then just to know that we made it is, it's like we worked our whole lives for this. Like I started swimming when I was seven, I'm 23, so that's two thirds of my life have been dedicated and gearing towards getting the Olympic ring tattoo and, and going to the Olympics and now it's happening. So it's hard to describe that. Uh, it's a dream come true dream to a goal to come true. Yeah, I agree. I think obviously like uh, when like COVID was at its peak and people were like, well, we don't even know if the Olympics are going to happen and then everything got postponed. Like that was a really stressful time period for myself and also I can only imagine like everyone else. Um, and obviously like rumors swirling that I tried to honestly just like block that out of my head just because you know, if the Olympics were going to happen, a different meet was going to happen, the same goal was just to, like, you know, go best time or, um, you know, like improve on your national ranking or your world ranking. So um, all the rumors, yeah, I kind of just try to block them out. And um, with the support of, like, my coaches, definitely they were, like, you know, kind of, like, try to keep that out. Like, what it, even if the Olympics wasn't going to happen this year, which I'm so grateful that it is, um, there's still Olympics three years from now, so, and obviously the goal is still the same, which is to make that again, so, yeah. Bueller. Sorry. Bueller. Hey, Zach, congratulations. Um, you talked about getting to sit on the lane line and really soaking in the whole atmosphere after you qualified and you know sometimes you do crazy things before you race what uh what does it mean to you to to be an entertainer and to entertain people in the sport and to put on a show yeah so i kind of think back to like when i was growing up and you go to a local hockey game or a local football game or any football game really um but you know you're there for you're there as a fan and you're there to be entertained it's a it's a night out it's a fun thing and um i think swimming doesn't it, not everybody takes it as that that role as seriously and i always have been a goofball and i kind of try to be true to that and i like to have fun i hate when i don't have fun 
as soon as I graduated, I told my coach, I'm like, look, if it's not fun at practice, I'm leaving. And there's only been like one or two times where it wasn't fun because I was like sick and that's just like it's not not productive. I'm like, let's just get out of here. But um, I like to have fun. I like I like to have other make other people have fun. I like to make people laugh, which they laughed in my interview when on deck, which I thought was kind of good because um, they were laughing. But yeah, I think everyone needs, needs to laugh, especially like now uh, with all the serious stuff that people were dealing with and. You guys are here for a show, so we might as well give it to you. For Alex, you and Gretchen swam together for a long time. How was it different this year with you guys being apart? How did you still support each other and push each other even though you weren't in the same place? And how did your relationship kind of evolve? Yeah, so uh, we... Obviously, like, we weren't training partners anymore, but that doesn't mean that we still weren't. I was obviously still, like, Snapchatting every single day, FaceTimes every single week. Um, I remember, like, um, my transition to UVA was um, not the easiest just because I was like, wow, college training is, like, really hard, and I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. I mean, like, I was expecting it, but nothing can really prepare you for that. Um, and so I would call her, and I'd be like, you won't even believe this 4 a.m. set I did. And, like, I would tell it to her, and she was like, wow. And then, um, yeah, like, she would obviously, like, I knew whatever she was doing just because I had already done, like, six years of that. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, like, she, whenever she was, like, feeling upset, she would call me, and, like, I would work it out with her. Like, even though we weren't there next to each other, whenever, like, we still were going through, like, the ups and downs of just trying to... Um, perform here at Olympic trials like we would share that with each other so it's still obviously like and when she got here like her and my old coach Doug Warren when like they showed up to the pool like I just immediately ran into Doug's arms and started like sobbing because like I just miss them so much so I think that just goes to show how much like even though I'm not with them all the time anymore that doesn't mean that they still aren't like probably like the most important part that this journey has been. Uh, this is for Zach. You said that you didn't do a good job of handling your emotions in the day, but you're still here as an Olympian. So you obviously had to fall back on something. So what mental training, what physical training helped you get on the Olympic team? Um, I, I tried to distract myself and, and talk to And I, I was I'm really honest when I tell people, like, you doing good? I'm like, no. <laughs> um, and I think that me being honest, uh, I'm like, yo, like I'm struggling. I'm like super nervous. Like my gut is just like in a ball. And my coaches were there. They talked me through it. They're like, look, dude, you're ready. People around, uh, we had a guy show up today. He doesn't swim until later this week. So he just got here today. He's like, look, dude, you've done this a thousand times, a million times. This is what's one more. And I was like, right, dude. And then when I left the team area to walk back for my race, I was like, it just like clicked. I'm like, I are the tiger game mode. I'm like, I'm ready for this. And then a lot of those nerves that were in my gut just like vanished. And um, my coaches walked me through. They they screwed my head on for me. So when that's screwed on, then, then my body can do what it's trained to. So I went to them. Hey Zach, you've been at Worlds, Pan Packs, Trials. Um, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen happen in the warm up pool? Hmm. Good question. Craziest thing. Can I think on that and get back to you? Like I, I want to give you the best answer that I can. If, yeah, if Bell lets me ask you that again, that'd be great. Yeah, give me like two minutes and I'll... I'll... <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Appreciate that. Hey, Alex, um, you said that you asked specifically to start focusing on the 200 IM training group. What led you to that decision to, to ask to focus on focus in that group? Uh, yeah, so when I first got to UVA, uh, my primary coach was Blair Bachman, and um, Paige, like, that, her, she's also her primary coach, so I was mainly in, like, distance group, as some would call it, I guess, and um, that was different for me, but I think it was a very good thing. I mean, I'm really happy with how I performed here. I think, like, the base that I was able to build um, in my first freshman season is unbelievably strong and you know I just 
but uh, there just got to a point when I was like, I feel like I, it would be more productive if I just like try to get my speed back. Really, I just wanted that speed because that's what makes me confident. And the biggest thing leading up to trials, like Todd was like, you know, it doesn't really matter like what you swim day to day at practice. Like obviously you need to be putting work in, but like it doesn't matter what you swim as long as like when you get to trials, like you know like that work is gonna pay off. That's all that matters. And so I was like, this is what's gonna help me. This is what's gonna make me confident. Obviously I was still doing like the, the yardage that I need to be doing, but I really just wanted to focus on like more um, speed based training. Um, and I think that really paid off. Okay, so the craziest thing that's I've seen in warm up is I was at Short Course Worlds in 2018, and just the lack of etiquette. No one ever talks about it, and somebody should. There's like seven different points um, I could write them down. Uh, maybe that's another thing. Anyways, um, so we were in China, and they were alternating which way you swim. So in like the odd lanes you'd swim, circle swim, and then in the other lanes you'd swim reverse. I'm like, that's fine, no biggie, no problem with that. The problem I have is you would think at that sort of level that if you're going into the wall, people would move out of the way for you so that you can flip, not necessarily the case. I'm like, dude, like, come on, don't, you don't stand in the middle of the wall at people pushing off right in front of you, right as you're about to go, and then going slow. Like, I get it, if you're gonna push off in front of somebody who's already going fast, you should be going faster than them so that I don't push into your feet. Or vice versa. I'm not going to push off in front and get run over. That's just me. Um, but the lack of etiquette, I was like, we're at world championships. Like, we're supposed to be the best in our country. We can't even figure out how to properly warm up together. I'm like, come on, guys. And it, was, it wasn't what just one country, though. It was a handful. And I was like, I, I was livid. I was like, I had like five, six different points and the things you should and should not do when you're warming up, especially when it's super crowded like that. We've had been super blessed with... You know, having wave one and wave two split up, make the meat smaller, makes warm up a lot more manageable, um, especially with the two different pools. If you time it right, you can basically get in with nobody, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, it's, there's, you have to swim differently. You have to be considerate of others. Um, how fast you're gonna go. If you're gonna kick, let some, give, give the opportunity to somebody, say, hey, I'm kicking. Would anybody like to go? If no one says anything, all you. So the lack of etiquette was what really got me. You know, with the pandemic still going on, um, is there any concern um, that there's going to be too many people in the warm-up pool in Tokyo, and that could kind of, you know, lead to some too close for comfort situations? No, I'd say at this point, we've been in. I'll speak for me. I'm, I'm not going to speak for Alex. Um, I just met her. Um, <laughs> I, I think we've been in. We've gotten comfortable being in a large crowd. Uh, I'm vaccinated, so. That, that provides a little bit of mental comfort there, but um, I'm not too worried about it. I guess the health officials are saying it's all good, and I didn't study medicine in college, so I'll just let them figure that out. So, no, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. If not, we'll leave. That's my motto, but it'll be fun, so we'll stay. <laughs> Zach, I, I wanted to ask, because you've been on a team at, the, at Worlds in 19 with Nathan Adrian, and obviously with the way things went tonight, that's probably his best chance of making the team. What did he provide from a leadership standpoint on, on that team, and what do you think would, would be missed if he doesn't qualify for this team? Yeah, so Nathan, Nathan, Nathan and Matt, I'm just kind of going to group yeah. them together just because they're so rock-solid leaders. Uh, me and Zane actually got to room with the two of them. Uh, they were the captains at, at Worlds, and me and Zane got to... Uh, live with them for that week and they're like yeah this is basically exactly what the Olympic Village is like and just they just had a plethora of knowledge and but there's like anytime you talk to them and they're super calm it's like hey what do you need it's like oh you can talk to them about your race they talk to you about about theirs and um, it's just the leadership they're they're kind of like the father figures of the team and I'm not I'm not gonna say they're not gonna make it because they're uh, they're the staples of, of U.S. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what would be missed. It's just um, they're they're a staple for us, and they're gonna make it. That's what they do. Perfect. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. That was fun. Can I take this?
kiss. <laughs> <laughs> do well and don't kiss. You can do it again. Okay, Alex, this be 